to play, threw him in a randomizer, and every match he would just randomize it. And uh, <laughs> whatever character popped up is what he played. But we're going to be getting into our game one here at the start of top eight winner side. Yeah, of course, as you guys mentioned, it is going to be Sharp versus Ned, Joker versus Pokemon Trainer. This is definitely one of those matchups. It's been a while since we've seen it. Last time I kind of saw it that I remember off the top of my head was Evo. Right, Evo last year when we saw when we saw um, MK Leo versus Tweak. So this is something I haven't seen in quite some time, especially for me. But let's get right into it. Already starting off with that aggressive Joker character that knows the neutral very well. Already kind of corner carry him to the other side of the stage. Yeah, no, that was a really quick 50% uh, thanks to the Aha uh, being able to tack on just a little bit of that extra damage. We're now sitting about 60 right now. Sharp is off to a hot start. We'll have to see how Ned can get it going back. Gonna get a withdrawal, but gonna eat an Aha for his troubles. Good forward tilt, gonna continue to apply some pressure here. Great grab. Uh, Ned definitely in a little bit of trouble here. Might want to switch very soon. Uh, wow, Sharp went for a hard read there. Not gonna be able to get it though. Yeah. And they're looking for an opportunity here with Squirtle. That's kind of one of the things about being in Squirtle mode, I would like to call it. Almost like a Monado art in this case. Squirtle definitely dishes up the damage in terms of percents, in terms of combos, all together. Mm. And then Ivysaur, right, is the big pick when you want to go ahead and start controlling more of the stage in terms of mid-range. Especially against a character like Joker, right? You can control so much of the stage, right? You can force Joker to go for that low recovery every time and then go for that downer. Or you can force Joker to start playing the mid-range game the way Ivysaur would benefit. Right, right, right. And right now, oh, wow. Sharp went real deep to try and kind of get Ned in some weird situation. Thankfully, Ned was able to find a way back to stage. Not going to drop a stock to that, but boy, that was a very scary spot to be in. Agreed, agreed. Nice, kind of standing. That's kind of one of those things about Joker, too. He can move in and out of the neutral pretty well. Doesn't have to necessarily worry too much. For try that good forward throw, yep. Already at that percent that's already gone, especially at the right side of the stage. Yep, uh, I mean... It was, it was as mentioned, a really great forward throw. And as you mentioned before, that neutral, uh, Joker's just such a mobile character. And, like, when played effectively, is just so elusive. Wow, going way deep for that edge guard. Not going to be able to get it as Ned's going to find a waterfall back to the ledge. But, uh, yeah, Sharp is definitely doing the right thing, going out deep there, trying to find something to take out the stock. Because right now you're at 160. That back air is going to be enough. Squirtle is too light to eat that and live. Yeah, good double jumps. Let's, like you said, right, being mobile is one of those things that Joker really accelerates in terms of speed, but also the jumps. You, you see a lot of Jokers go for anti-hops, double jumps, mix-ups, just to find a ways to get in with up throw, up air, or even Aha in that situation. He's taking Ned all the way to 46. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Sharp is putting on a combo highlight here. A absolutely juggling the hell out of Ned right now, just continuously grabbing him, tossing him up in the air just to catch him again as he lands. And gonna put 88% on him before really Ned gets anything going. At 10% is actually from that waterfall earlier, and Ned just hasn't landed a hit since. That, I think that was a zero to death, am I right? Yeah, yeah, you're not kidding. Zero to death indeed. Ned cannot touch this man. Looking like the character crisis finally has paid off with this Joker pick here, 34%. This is definitely one of those percents I would be kind of a little more scared about Squirtle, but I respect the Squirtle, right? Because you can put on damage, and the more damage you put on the Joker in Arsene mode, the faster that thing goes away. Right, right, right. And yeah, no, that, uh, that character crisis that he currently uh, went through, that actually helped solve by his friend MK Leo of all people. Kind of helped them go, hey man, your Joker and your ZSS, that should be what you're focusing on. And it is paying off quite handsomely right now as they're looking and to be uh, in prime position to take this game one, assuming we don't see Ned get some sort of crazy clutch going on. His Charizard does a lot of crazy stuff and he's still alive right Ooh. now. So that means there's still plenty of time to find that comeback. No kidding, man, but he caught this man jumping up in the skies. He said, if you want to hang up there in the sky, I can bring you right back down with that up special. Good spacing, Ooh. yet again, able to dodge the up smash, knowing just where to be outside of that space range. Yep, and then we're going to see a forward throw again. Yep, going to die, but we got a Charizard at 130, so this can go one of two ways. Either we see Sharp find a way to secure this stock, right, which would be ideal for Sharp, but you also got a Charizard with almost full rage now, oh, and yes. that is one of the most terrifying things in the game. Gonna go to Squirtle, I don't know how I feel about this. The up throw, not gonna be enough, but kinda close. Yeah, good, good on Sharp to uh, definitely recognize the fact that Squirtle is uh, within the top five lightest characters of the game, so that up throw might have been a trick. Fortunately, like you said, right, not close enough here. Sharp looking for an ability to get in, safe as possible, because he knows he's got an in the back for a back air. A day keeps Ivysaur away, and we'll take Sharp with game one. 
Yeah, no, very strong performance there. It did look like it was getting a little shaky because whenever you get into those last stock scenarios, like, you know, against a uh, nearly full range Charizard, it's always a little shaky. And for good reason, Charizard's got very strong moves, great aerials, and really it just a back air at like 60 could be all it needs, uh, a Charizard needs to kind of close out a game. So good stuff to Sharp for bunkering down there, not letting his nerves get the best of him. And we're going to be going into this game two as Sharp is up 1-0. Yeah, good stuff on Sharp though. Like he, like I mentioned earlier, he had a very well, I would say kind of mindset as well as his patience not letting that get to him, but also really good keen awareness of how the matchup can be, especially where to be around Charizard. Like that spacing that he was able to dodge up smash twice within a really mm -hmm. good spaced range definitely demonstrates that just enough to definitely show that. Also just knowing, hey, Squirrel's the top five light character. I can up throw him and it might actually kill. Yeah, right? No, it was definitely really good recognition from uh, from Sharp. About to see if he can kind of bring that momentum into game two here. I know Ned's going to be trying to adapt some sort of new game plan. Going to get a really hot start here. Squirtle going to put on 48. And Sharp going to find a way kind of back to stage until Ned starts to open him up just a little bit more. Yeah. I can kind of see Ned's flow a little bit here. You're right now that you see Arsene activated, it's up to you. Can I get in with Squirtle? Can I dish out damage to get rid of Arsene as soon as possible? Or will I make the Ivasaur switch to kind of wait wait and beat him out with a little bit more time in mid-range? But you can see Squirtle at 62. I'd be scared if I get hit by a forward smash because that Squirtle might go flying up the stage. I mean, he's done a good job eliminating that uh, Arsene bar. He got the meter down to about almost half, just a little more than that. And overall, I mean, yeah, you took about 82% total, but you didn't lose a stock and you're on Squirtle the whole time. You're playing this matchup pretty damn well, if that's the case. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. Fourth throw, will that keep Joker away? Yes, it does. Man. Yes, this man it does. is just yeeting Joker off the stage <laughs> every single chance he gets. Yeah, no, he's uh, with that Charizard, he's getting that forward throw right at the ledge, too, of all things. Like, so there's almost like no guarantee for any bit of survival. So, um, super good stuff from Ned. We'll have to see if Sharp can answer in kind somehow. Uh, did he? I think that was like a weird miss grab or something. I don't yeah. know what happened there, but <laughs> hey, it's a lucky break for Sharp. Oh, wow, weird scenario. Okay, gonna be able to get back onto the stage, no problem, though. Uh, I think both players are kind of shook there. It's just kind of weird scenario. What great up smash from Sharp. Uh, just able to close out that first stock. Have to see if he can find a way to kind of bring this lead either in his direction or just make the game a little closer. Right now, Ned has a little bit of a lead, about 49%. We'll see if he can find, you know, just find a way to close out the stock. Yeah, I mean, we talk about how Joker can definitely be one of the winners, one of the true winners of getting back into the neutral as soon as possible, right? And even with Arsene activated, he not only takes more neutral, but he takes more damage. You put those two together in tangent. And you can definitely see Sharp slowly make a comeback though, but he's trying to play this as close as possible. Ned with great, I, I would say on the whiff punish there, because he kind of saw this man go for that down special. Sorry, yeah, uh, take uh, aim. Dude, that, that was definitely a couple of scary scenarios there. He's getting uh, uh, doing a really good job uh, spacing out these forward tilts, and Sharp's doing an even better job finding the text and not get caught up in like a jab lock scenario. Uh, Squirtle, especially at this percentage, if he can get you in a jab lock, that leads right into a forward smash, which is actually pretty strong. It can, it can definitely kill a lot of characters. And now in a scary spot right there, going to be able to get back onto the stage. No problem, though. We'll have to see how Sharp finds a way to kind of get back from here. And that's, okay, going to give him our sense, so it's not too bad. <laughs> Yeah, all right, miss grab here, Lice. As soon as you see that, you know he's not gonna go ahead and try to go a little bit over against so it comes back to the stage. You make sure you wanna hold stage control as much as possible. You see him fighting Ivysaur with those back airs, and that pays off, because you know what? Ned was way too far for that vine whip to connect. Is that gonna the kill? Wow, great DI, gonna be able to live. And yeah, man, uh, it was just great spacing and uh, just kind of putting off enough pressure that really Ned had no choice but to die. It just went too far down. Yeah. <laughs> In trying, it's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't. But anyways, the tail away will keep that one out. So good, good. I wasn't even a space back air too. I was just a good back air in general, just to make sure you're like, okay, I see where you're at. Here's my back air. You like to throw yours? I'll throw mine. Yeah, no, for sure. And right now, I mean, these guys are definitely going to be battling for the lead here. It's pretty much do or die final stock on this game, too. And a great little combination there as Ned is going to get that waterfall to kind of end that combo and just kind of put Sharp right off stage. Just kind of gives uh, him some time to really adjust his game plan, try to find a way to keep Sharp off stage. But now Sharp is back on the offensive, trying to build up this damage. Got that Arsene going to see how much they can use that to their advantage. Okay, once Good again, forward. out there fishing. Yeah, looking for that back air, especially knowing, you know what, I can definitely throw this out there. It's one of the best moves Joker Ooh. has in the toolkit. There's the dash tech to read the landing. Good forward oh. smash. He sees that he overextends, and at the last second, Sharp pulls it out. Right when we thought Neville was going to be the victor on this one. 
Yeah, I mean, that just goes to show uh, the type of pa uh, player that Sharp can be. Now up 2-0. Used a little bit of that pressure off stage that Joker's very good at putting out there, kind of forcing Ned to recover a little earlier, which unfortunately put him right on the stage, which ended up resulting in that forward smash we saw right there. Again, Sharp up 2-0 in prime position to be the first player into winner's finals. Yeah, and for those of you guys wondering, of course, this is Winter Semi, so it is a best of five. Ned has another chance to possibly reverse 3-0 Sharp if it is in the cards for him. And, of course, this is do or die for Ned. Set point for Sharp. Let's see what he can pull it out here. He was doing really good with the Squirtle in the start, right? Very aggressive, very well keen of, like, how to play the matchup with Squirtle. Take care of the Arsene. Once you kind of got him over Arsene, you can switch to Ivasaur a little bit and then see how you can how Joker will handle the mid-range there. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, it's, it's, as you mentioned, I mean, Squirtle is is definitely a character that's known for, you know, hey, I'm going to get you 40, 50 percent, coach. I swear to God, I, I won't make you regret putting me in. And Ned's been doing a very good job of making that happen. But now, man, Sharp is on the offensive. I, that momentum is definitely in his favor. He is feeling it right now as he continues to apply this pressure and push this lead even further into his advantage. Yeah, oh, good on the comeback right to the ledge here with an immediate attack to hit the shield. Kind of cross them up. Good up smash, Ooh. I would say. Definitely sensing, you know what, the first thing my opponent might actually do in disadvantage there is jump out of the corner, and that was a good read on his side. All right, we're going to see Arsene come out. Ned going to go for a crazy forward smash, but trying to see if, you know, maybe catch a roll or just a neutral get up. But Sharp is a bit smarter than that, knows what he's getting into, is and now in a prime position to take this stock here. Nope, never mind. Got in a weird spot underneath that PS2. You don't want to spend too much time down there because you could lose a stock to some crazy uh, angle off the stage, so... <laughs> Indeed, all right, and the invincibility from getting out of our stand, but not invincibility on the re-grab of the ledge. Ned takes it away with a board, so good play. Yeah, very good play, but now seeing about 113, Sharp is good at closing out these stocks around these percentages. He tries not to let it go too far, but Ned continues to pile on some damage here, getting that extra credit on that second stock. Yeah, I'm going to get a couple of switches. I was going to say, like, Ned's, Ned's doing a pretty solid job. I'm like, okay, I'm trying to hold on to this lead here. See, there's another Arsene. Good neutral there. Not enough damage, but switching to Charizard just because you get a little bit more added weight to survive a couple, couple of his moves. But at the same time, you are a big hurt box to kind of countermend that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's just kind of, you know, you pick and choose your, your weaknesses and your strength. And unfortunately, it didn't pay out too much. However, you did get that extra credit, so it's not too bad. It wasn't all for naught. But, I mean, uh, Sharp is going to find a way to kind of get that offense going here. Uh, Ned doing his best to kind of play defense and get out, out of that corner area on that stage, but man, these guys just kind of trade position back and forth. This is yeah. all over the place. And you can even see with that back throw, Ned wanted to immediately set Sharp to go for a low recovery at that situation. Didn't quite find it though. But you can see Sharp is having some really good time here, just pushing Ned right to the corner. Down throw gets the upper here. Oh no, so close on the up special on that one. Uh, that was actually all, all that movement at the end there just uh, by Sharp kind of forcing Ned to take weird directions and kind of punishing yep. him for like random jumps or just wrong movements is actually really, really good. But doesn't matter. We're going to see that big old back air from Charizard as he finds a way to take out that second stock. Ned with a solid lead here, but it's not over until we see the game screen. Yeah, that is very true here. We saw how things were for Sharp last game. He's definitely on the cards to bring him back. A really great back around that one. Trying to see how low and how far he can push Ned right on the recovery. Good neutral there right there just to stop him from going for that recovery once again to as he lands the stage. The pressure is on from Sharp. He is not letting this man breathe. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Sharp, Sharp's really good at just putting down that pressure. I mean, it's, it's what he does. Both of his characters, both very, very, very good. Um... Uh, excuse me, offensive characters, lots of mobility, lots of offense. So, I mean, it's just, it's what he does, it's what he's good at. But it doesn't matter as Ned's going to find that up there with the Ivysaur to close out that game three, extending this set just a little bit longer. We'll see if he's able to take game four to force a game five or if Sharp is going to end it right there. Yeah, definitely. That was good stuff. Def like, I think one of the things that you can see in both players is their ability to understand, okay, my opponent's in the corner. What is the most casual, usual option my opponent will do? Jump out of the corner. Why? Everybody does it. You see it in Street Fighter. You see it in Marvel. You see it in Smash. Jumping out of the corner is a common option to get out of those situations where you don't want to get grabbed. You don't want to get hit by an aerial or an attack. So you jump out of the corner. And at that situation, Ned was not afraid to pull the trigger on the up air. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, Ned Ned played that game uh, very, very well. We saw the the aggressiveness with that Charizard and that Squirtle. We needed it, and uh, that Ivysaur played a pretty good defensive game. You know, 
uh, the whole like, hey, here I come, just kidding. <laughs> like all these feints and stuff like that. And it ended up working out really, really well. I ended up ending that game with a two stock lead, which uh, I think is the best we've seen so far in these games. I think every game has been a one stock game until that game three. So, I mean, we could see Ned be that top player that he is and just be like, hey, you know, you took two games. That's great and all, but I think I've got you figured out. And we'll just have to see if Ned can get that gameplay into action. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right, well, let's jump right into it. There's going to be a little bit of a switch here. We're going to go to the ZSS, as you can see here. We'll come right to you just to show you guys how it's going down. 2-1, Ned versus Sharp. Oh, let me go ahead and switch that for you. They switch sides here. Oh. Uh, we well, we're going to see Sharp bring out the ZSS. Uh, very interesting pick. I thought the Joker was doing just fine. You know, it was just one game, but... Maybe, uh, maybe Sharp knows something that we don't know. Uh, maybe there's he's some, there's something about the ZSS and Pokemon Trainer matchup that just seems to work out for him, and uh, it's kind of just like a backup plan. Like, hey man, that's great that you got this, uh, you've got my, you know, momentum and uh, habits down with Joker, but now you got this other character who is just as fast, just as aggressive, but has all sorts of different options. Yeah. Definitely one of the things that makes ZSS really difficult to deal with, I would say, is that neutral air. The fact that her forward air is really great in the air. She's just, like you said, right? I think one of the things that Sharp accelerates is pressure through movement and and his ability to just go ahead and act that well. Look at that already. Taking care of the stock with less than 30 seconds on the clock. Yeah, no, this character change definitely paying off. This whole change of pace is definitely throwing Ned for a loop here. And uh, yeah, he's just going to continue to pile on this damage. Uh, Charge aren't gonna come out to play, but again, Zero Suit Samus can take advantage of big bodies like it's nobody's business. Yeah. Oh, great parry on that one to immediately punish with the up smash. You get that plus frame advantage a little bit. The forward tail kind of pushing a little bit of pressure. Safe as possible just to get out of the situation here. Good air, uh, not air dodge, but roll from uh, Sharp there. Gonna be able to continue to pile on his damage. And man, 66 so far in the second stock. Oh, geez. Okay, now <laughs> I forget this in the Smash 4. You're not gonna get a couple up airs into the upbeat and just take that stock. But <laughs> had a little bit of a flashback there. <laughs> Oh, nice. I like right. I kind of try to test this man to see if he might try to roll out of a disadvantage. Common common thing that you know a lot of noobs do, but uh, you know what? Ned's been around the block a long time, so he's not going to make that mistake. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, uh, it's still very heavily in Sharp's favor. He's close to the lapping a percentage right now, which would really put him in a good spot. Ned looks very uncertain. Going to find a good forward air, though, to close out that stock, so good stuff. But yeah, Ned looking a little, a little nervous here. It's definitely hard to try and adapt to a new game plan on the fly, especially when you're already at risk of going in a loser's bracket. Oh, most definitely. You can even see that Ned kind of slowly fall back against the arrow we saw in ZSS, where he just ran like, okay, he's going to pressure me on the ground and then go for an aerial there. But unfortunately, when you get the ground there, the quick up special will take care of the stock here. And the pressure is definitely all on Ned here. Like you said, right, trying to adapt to a new character and the way that ZSS also delivers uh, punishing moves to great movement, but also great plus frames on things like neutral air. It's a whole mm -hmm. different game at this point. Yeah, no, for sure. And <laughs> right now, Sharp's throwing out a lot of grabs. And it's something I pointed out to him before that he grabs a lot with ZSS. And I think he's toned it down a lot, but he's landing a lot of them today. Uh, so, I mean, hey, if it's working out, keep doing it. Uh, not going to get it right there, though, as we see a, a missed grab. And Ned's going to get a little bit of a punish on it. But still, uh, Sharp is doing such a great job just keeping this pressure going on this last stock uh, for, for Ned. This, this could be uh, Ned's winner run at coming to an end unless he can find a way to dig deep and put this game away. Yeah. Digging deep is definitely going to be one thing. He either has to dig deep or get dug deep by ZSS. So we'll see how it comes down to it. Like you said, I think it's Sharp coming to terms with, okay, look, I got this man pressured. He's on the corner. He's holding shield. He's going for these these options where I can catch him with a grab. Why not pull it out and see what I can get for? Oh, that was oh, great. wow. He faked it out so well at the last second when he went for an empty hop. No, oh, man, that's just Sharp's been on the absolute grind. Uh, as mentioned before, he's he's one of the best players in Wi-Fi. Even before COVID, he was on his way to being the t one of the, the top dog, probably. Uh, and as we can see, it doesn't matter <laughs> if, if in these uh, these COVID times, doesn't matter how many great players come to offline and try to play these Wi-Fi brackets. 